thanks again for joining us on Out and About with Gary. This is part two of our segment with legendary rock hound, entrepreneur, and prospector, and don't forget pirate, Steve Thompson. Today we're talking more about rocks, but this time it's for the basic new collector, whether it be the kid or an older person that really can't get out in the hills too much. Where can we start finding some of these gems? Gary, as uh, we talked about, when you were a kid and I, were, I was a kid, how we found a lot of treasures just up the lane or along the road. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks in North Burley, and, uh, you know, what they, how they treat the people on the wrong side of the tracks, they don't pave their roads until, you know, whenever. So I used to wait for the water truck to come down the road and uh, sprinkle the dust out of the road, and I'd go right along behind the, wa the water truck and find agates and obsidian and uh, jaspers, all kinds of really pretty colorful rocks. And a lot of these are just rocks that uh, you'll find on gravel roads, just basic gravel roads that they get from the gravel pits and spread out there. And obviously they've been chopped up a little bit, some of them, but that's what we find. You can find a lot of treasures right in your own backyard. Gravel pits, along the gravel roads, road cuts, you name it. You don't have to get out very far sometimes to find a lot of treasures. I found a huge piece of bone that ended up being a, an ancient water buffalo from uh, from a gravel uh, drop that was along the canal bank that was just this out the Rupert. To clarify, the ancient water buffalo did not come from the wrong side of the tracks. No. No. no that was me. I was wearing water buffalo. <laughs> oh, okay. And I didn't pay the road. So that's how I got started in my rock collecting of all things. Yeah, and like I was telling you, I, I found, uh, when I was a kid, up our lane, petrified wood, a very nice piece. Still have it to this day, been almost 40 years later. That's right. If people, if, you know, elderly people or, you know, during the wintertime when you can't get out, if you want to start rock collecting and, and uh, start uh, tumbling, there's all kinds of ways you can get involved and never even leave your, leave your home. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things that's kind of fun is you can, you can buy or trade rocks from around the world. Uh, you can subscribe to magazines, you can go online to Rock and Gems and, and uh, Gems and Mineral type of magazines and websites and you can acquire a lot of things. Well, let's see some of the rocks that you've tumbled that you've gotten locally. Well, these aren't necessarily all locally, but uh, from around the country, Utah, Idaho, uh, up around uh, Muldoon, Cary, uh, down in the Nevada desert. They're just ugly old rocks when you start out, but as you can see, some of them have some pretty colors when you tumble them. And a uh, rock tumbler is fairly easy and simple way to get started in jewelry making and turning your rocks from, from a rough rock into a finished beautiful gemstone. And if I wanted to get uh, into the rock tumbling, where can I find a rock tumbler? Well, I can special order in rock tumblers and different kinds of lapidary equipment. So I can get people set up with about anything, including uh, uh, basic tools like rock hammers, chisels, and so on. They even go out and... and uh, uh, start finding your own, but uh, anybody just get a hold of me and I'll be able to set them up or get something ordered in right away. So they can kind of feel like their own prospector. They get the pan, the, the, the hammer, the chisel, and, the, and then the tumbler to finish the product just for those wintertime blues, something to do in the basement, uh, just kind of along that lines, right? Absolutely. Well, let's go over here and see what other gems you have. Well, like I say, I've been collecting for a long time and trading and whatnot. I'm showing you this little jewel. This is another piece of optical quartz. This piece here was from Brazil. Wow, Brazilian, and that's a very large piece, too. Brazilian quartz. Yeah. And some more sharp teeth from a, <laughs> some, some poor old schmuck of a, <laughs> of a shark. Did this one come from Utah, too, this uh, shark? The, these, uh, these sharks <laughs> came from... Uh, came from uh, around Africa, for, you know, there's, and I have here some, uh, I don't know if you can really see very much detail, but these are actually little emerald crystals from Colombia. Well, let me try zooming in and we'll see. Oh, there, yeah, there we go, and those are emerald crystals? These are little emerald crystals from, from Colombia. From Colombia. So, you name it, Gary, I mean, uh, you can tell that I kind of like pirates. I like to add a little color to my collection. But uh, these old rascals here, the little skeleton guys, uh, they were claim jumpers. Don't ever come, don't ever jump my claims. See what happens. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You'll end up in the pirate's lair as a skeleton. 
right. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back after a message from our sponsor.